I'm cooking for one today, and what that means is whatever I wanna make, I get to make. And today, I really kinda wanna make some steak and those crispy fried potato stacks that my friend Matt, who's now TikTok famous, made a few weeks back. I'm gonna leave a link down to a cook named Matt's channel, so please go check him out. He's a good friend of mine. Give him some love. And I think I wanna top it all off with a Calabrian chili chimichurri sauce. I find cooking for one to be a real joy. It's an important act of self-care. You can experiment, you can try new things, or you can just satisfy yourself with something you know you love and that you crave. So if that sounds good to you, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, and let's just jump right into it. Before we jump right into the recipe, I just wanna take a minute to thank my patrons, all of the people scrolling up on the screen right now. Without you guys, this show wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. Hoping to add some fun new things to the whole Patreon world over there soon. So thanks so much for supporting the show. Now we've got really three components to worry about today, and I'm gonna start with the chimichurri. I don't have a blender, so here's how to make it by hand. Take a couple cloves of garlic and smash them real nice, and then sprinkle some coarse salt, and using the edge of your knife in like this rocking motion back and forth, begin to puree the garlic. The salt is acting sort of like a mortar and pestle would, creating a surface that sort of helps puree the garlic. Now de-seed and chop up a few Calabrian chilies, which are optional by the way, and chop these into the garlic nice and fine. Get that into a bowl and then add a couple of tablespoons of the liquid that the chilies were packed in. Next, get a bunch of parsley and chop that as fine as you can using a rocking chop and alternating directions until it's the texture you want. Get everything into a bowl and add a half a lime, about a third of a cup of red wine vinegar, and a third of a cup of olive oil. Give it a taste and make adjustments. It should be thick, but it should also slightly flow as a sauce. Now we're onto the potato stacks, which really only a call for russet potatoes. You need russet for the starch so that they hold together. The thinner they are, the better, but my mandolin kind of sucks. So I'm going a little bit thicker and, you know, imperfection is okay here. Once sliced, restack those potatoes to sort of put the potato back together in a sense. And if you'll see, mine is kind of sloped. So I'm just gonna crisscross a few of the stacks until it evens out. Now you're just gonna trim the edges of the potato into a square or rectangle and then cut into the whatever final shape you want. Do it slowly with a very sharp knife to avoid any slippage that's gonna cause some uneven cuts. Although that's not gonna be the end of the world. And throw the potato scraps into a veg bag for broth or you can fry them up as well. Now let's head on over to the stove. I want a small pot for this so I could use less oil. So I'm gonna do them in batches, but you could always do this in one bigger pot. I want the oil to start off low, around 280 to 290 degrees so I can get the inside of the potatoes cooked. The thing about the starch though is it's prone to sticking. So you wanna try and keep it moving while also ensuring they don't fall apart. So it's a bit of a balancing act. After a few minutes at that low temperature, I wanna bump the heat up and have it start to make its way up to around 350 degrees and then finish cooking the potatoes until they're crispy and golden brown all over. While that cooks, pat the steaks dry, then season with salt and pepper. And now you're gonna have a pan preheating on medium high heat. Once it's hot, you're gonna add a touch of oil and then you're gonna add the steaks and sear them on the first side for about 70% of the cooking time. Develop a good sear, maybe about four minutes and then flip for the final two to three minutes for a nice medium. Since they're so thin, I'm just gonna cook all three of them and if I don't get to one of them, I'm gonna save them for another meal. Season that other side of the meat with salt and pepper. By now the first batch of potatoes should be done. Get them onto a rack to cool and season them with salt. And then now allow that oil to drop a bit in temp for that next batch of potatoes. To speed it up, you could just shut the heat off completely. I can see I have a nice crust on the steaks and it's been a few minutes, so I'm just gonna give them a flip. 
By now, the oil should be cool enough to add the next batch of potatoes. After about six to seven minutes of total cooking time, I want to remove the steaks and allow them to rest while finishing the rest of the potatoes. Again, the temp is back up at 350. We're just going to cook them until they're crispy and browned on all sides, and the center is fluffy and cooked. Season them with salt, and now it's time to plate. Now the grains on a skirt steak are pretty well defined and we want to make sure we cut across them. Calabrian chili, the chimichurri, mixed with the potatoes, which go really well with chimichurri, and the steak. Lots of flavor, simple meal. It's a meal that you cook for yourself, it's gonna make you happy. <laughs> 